Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to talk to you about Green's Theorem in this video, in particular how to use it as a shortcut for doing circulation and flux line integrals over closed curves. So here I've got the circulation form of Green's Theorem that says the integral over a closed curve, remember this round symbol here on our integral means we're integrating over a closed curve, f dot t hat ds, that's going to be equal to the double integral of partial nx minus partial my dA. And a big thing to remember is that this is a shortcut for calculating line integrals when c is a closed curve, like a circle, a square, a triangle, an ellipse, that kind of a thing. Not where we're just going from one point along a curve to another, but when c is simple and closed, we can use this. Some really cool things about this, you'll notice that this circulation integral here is actually a line integral, so it's an integral over the boundary of some closed region, whereas this double integral actually is over the region inside of that boundary. And these two things are actually the same. So this double integral allows us to shortcut a line integral if we can simply use the region inside of the closed curve and evaluate this integral over it. A couple of things that need to be true, obviously these nx and my expressions, these partial derivatives of m and n, need to exist over the region. We'll go ahead and point out that partial nx minus partial my is actually what we call the 2D curl of f, the two-dimensional curl of f. It's also called the kth component of curl, or the circulation density if you've talked about it along those lines in some other context. One thing that we can remember is when partial my and partial nx are the same, remember that is a gradient field, it's a conservative field. So if partial nx and partial my are the same, then obviously the function inside of this double integral is going to be zero, and we would get circulation being zero. Finally, this dA on the end of our double integral over the region, we may calculate this many different ways depending on the shape of our region in the xy plane. If it makes sense, we may calculate this dy dx, we may integrate dx dy. If it's a round type of region, we may integrate in polar r dr d theta instead of one of these above rectangular options. Let's go ahead and look at our first example here. We have a vector field that is negative 3y comma 3x. We want to calculate the circulation over this closed curve, that is the unit circle counterclockwise. So we will convert our line integral using Green's theorem because this is a closed curve, the unit circle. We're going to treat it as double integral over the region, the unit circle. We'll integrate dA and our function will be partial nx minus partial my. Let's look at my and nx first. So if negative 3y is m and 3x is n, that tells me then that partial my, if I take the derivative of negative 3y with respect to y, that will give me negative 3 and partial nx, if I take the partial derivative of n with respect to x, partial derivative of 3x with respect to x would be 3. So we will go ahead and set up our integral as the double integral of nx, which is 3, minus my, which is negative 3, and we'll integrate that dA. Now this is where I choose, do I do dy dx, dx dy, or r d r d theta in polar. Since it's a unit circle and it's a round region, I'm going to choose polar and say r d r d theta for my dA. Now if it's the unit circle, think about the bounds for r. How far out from the origin can I go and be in the unit circle? Where well, I can go from an r of 0 to an r of 1, a radius of 1. And if I want the entire unit circle, then my theta bounds need to be from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, let's do some simplifying of this integral. So definitely keeping our 0 to 2 pi and 0 to 1, but 3 minus negative 3 actually will give us 6 in here, and the r from our dA says that we're integrating actually 6r with respect to r. So let's do that inside integral first, keeping our outer integral of 0 to 2 pi Integrating 6r, we would get the power going up to 2, and we would divide by 2, which would reduce our 6, so we'll get 3r squared, and we'll evaluate from r bounds of 0 to 1. Lastly, integrating d theta once we've evaluated. Okay, let's go ahead and evaluate. So integral from 0 to 2 pi, if I plug in 1, I will get 3 times 1 squared, which is 3 minus, if I plug in 0, I will get 3 times 0 squared, which is 0, and
and then we'll integrate d theta. Well, of course, 3 minus 0 is just going to give us 3, right? So our final integral here will be from 0 to 2 pi of just simply 3 d theta. And if I integrate 3 with respect to theta, that's just going to give me 3 theta. And then I'll evaluate from 0 to 2 pi. So if I plug in 2 pi for theta, 3 times 2 pi, that would give me 6 pi. Minus, if I plug in 0, 3 times 0 would be 0. So we'll get 6 pi minus 0, of course, then our circulation here over this boundary of the unit circle counterclockwise in this field, negative 3y, 3x, we're going to get an answer of 6 pi for that. Looking at our next one, we want to find the circulation over the closed curve that's a triangle with vertices 0, 0, 2, 0, and 2, 2. And our field this time is y, negative x. So let me go ahead and sketch my triangle with vertices 0, 0, 2, 0, and 2, 2. So if you notice, these are really going to be just kind of in the quadrant 1 zone here. So 0, 0, and we have 2, 0, which is out at 2 here. And then 2, 2 is going to be up at 2 units above that, right? So if I have a triangle that looks something like that, that's what we get. This is our region here. And we're going to set up our double integral using this region, then we'll integrate nx minus my and choose a da format to use. So let's go back over here. We'll say m is y here and n is negative x in this case. So we'll need my. Let's figure out my. Well, partial derivative of y with respect to y is just 1. And then nx, so the partial derivative of negative x with respect to x is just negative 1. So that's the inner part, that's our function in our double integral. Let's set up our double integral here. So we will get nx, which is negative 1, minus my, which is positive 1. Evaluating that integral using some sort of dA. Um, this is not round, so I wouldn't use polar. Let's say like a dy dx maybe, or something like that. So if I want to find dy dx integration bounds, remember we fix the outer variable and we draw through in the increasing direction of the inner variable to find our bounds. So I just choose some x value, let's say this one, and I draw through in the increasing y direction. Where do I go into the region? Well, I go through into the region at the horizontal axis, which is y equals 0. And I come out of the region on the diagonal slanty line here. That's going to be y equals x, isn't it? If you can tell based on what we go through to 2. So from 0 to x will be our inner bounds there. And our outer bounds being constants, we just choose the leftmost point, which is 0, and the rightmost point, which is 2. So we integrate from 0 to 2 dx. Let's go ahead and simplify our function here. So we'll say integral from 0 to 2, integral from 0 to x, and we'll actually get negative 2 as our function. And we're going to integrate that dy dx. So let's integrate dy first. We'll keep our 0 to 2. Integrating negative 2 dy would give us negative 2y. And we would then evaluate that from 0 to x. We'll do the dx part last. Let's go ahead and plug in our bounds. So we'll get the integral from 0 to 2. If I plug in x for y, that will give me negative 2x. Minus, if I plug in 0 for y, that will give me negative 2 times 0 would be 0. And then we'll still have our integral dx on the outside. And that's certainly just negative 2x in there, right? So we're integrating from 0 to 2, negative 2x dx. Let's go ahead and do the antiderivative of negative 2x with respect to x now. So that will just give us negative x squared. And then if we evaluate from 0 to 2, plugging in 2, 2 squared is 4, and then taking the negative of that is going to give us negative 4. Minus, if I plug in 0, 0 squared will give me 0. And so we get the circulation for this one being negative 4. Let's look additionally at the flux form for Green's theorem. So let's say we're trying to do a line integral in terms of flux, which is an integral. Now with Green's theorem, it must be over a closed curve, but we're doing integral of vector field f dot n hat ds. So we're thinking about the normal amount of flow that we get, which is our flux. So that's going to be equal to the double integral over the region dA, but our function in the integral is actually going to be partial mx plus 
partial ny. So a bit of a different formula to plug into our integral once we set up our bounds and choose our dy's, dx's, dr's, d theta's, etc. This quantity partial mx plus partial my is actually what we call the divergence in two dimensional. So it's the two dimensional divergence. It's also called the flux density in certain scenarios. And this two dimensional divergence is actually a measure of how much a vector field is spreading out at particular points. Let's go back to using our first region and our first vector field. So we're going to go back to a field of negative 3y comma 3x. We're going to be integrating over the unit circle again, but now we're actually finding a flux integral, so f dot n hat ds. So if I use the flux version of Green's theorem, which I can over this closed curve, the unit circle, let's go back and remind ourselves this is m and this is n here. So we have partial mx now that we're interested in, which is different than before. We were interested in partial my in the circulation form. So partial mx here, partial derivative of negative 3y with respect to x is actually 0 here and partial ny, which is what we're interested in here, is actually going to be, again, if this is 3x and we're taking the derivative with respect to y, this is a constant, so the derivative of that is 0. And what we end up with is a double integral, and inside I end up with 0 plus 0. Now dA, remember before we set this up as a polar, integral where we said r dr d theta and we said with the unit circle we would go from a radius of 0 to 1 in the region and all the way around the circle we would go from 0 to 2 pi and that's all true but the issue is our function now that we're integrating is 0 right so when I do this inner integral here I integrate 0 that will give me 0 for an answer and then when I integrate 0 again that's going to give me 0 for an answer again so I actually get 0 flux along the unit circle when dealing with this vector field. And the reason is if you actually, if you plot this vector field, you'll see this is a rotational field. So actually nothing is flowing in or out. Everything is flowing in a nice circular path around the origin in this field. So we don't actually have any flux for this particular integral. Looking at our last example here, we're going to use our triangular region before. Our field now is going to be 2x comma y. So let's go ahead and I'll very briefly plot my region again. So remember we were using the line y equals x, I believe, to make our triangle. And this was our region, and this was 0, obviously, and this was 2, and this was also up at a y value of 2. And so what we'll need is mx plus ny, and then we'll set up our double integral. So our m in this case is 2x, and our n is y mx then, partial derivative of 2x with respect to x, is going to be 2. ny, partial derivative of y with respect to y, is going to be 1. So I'll go ahead and set up my double integral. Now what I'll have with mx plus ny is I'm going to have 2 plus 1. And then setting this integral up dA, I'll just do it like before I did dy dx before. And remember, if you need to, you can scroll back. We went from 0 to x, and then we went from 0 to 2 for this region here. So if you need to review how we got that, you can scroll back and see that. So if you go ahead and condense this function on the inside, we'll have integral from 0 to 2, integral from 0 to x. We'll just have a function of 3 in here. And then integrating 3 with respect to y will give us 3y, and we'll evaluate that integral from 0 to x. Integral dx will be last. Now if I plug in x for y, here I will get 3x minus, if I plug in 0 for y, I will get 0 dx, and then obviously 3x minus 0 is just going to be 3x, right? So we get the integral from 0 to 2 of 3x dx. Now this is just a power rule, right? So when I integrate x, I get x squared over 2, so that'll give us a 3 halves out front, x squared, and then we'll plug in from 0 to 2 and evaluate that. If I plug in 2, I would get 2 squared would be 4, that would reduce the 2, so that's actually going to give us 6 there, minus if we plug in 0, 3 halves times 0 would still be 0. And so 6 minus 0 will give us a flux of 6 over this region with this field.
Some things about Green's theorem to use it in general, remember you need to be finding a line integral over a closed curve. To do that, obviously you'll need to be able to set up and evaluate the double integral easily in order to use Green's theorem to do it as well. Make sure you're comfortable with knowing which form you're using, circulation or flux, and which partial derivatives go in the function for each of those. We're going to go ahead and expand on, in our next and final video on vector fields, we're going to expand on this idea of curl and divergence that we briefly touched on in this video. So check that out if you're interested in those topics. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.